Major U.S. airlines warn the rollout of new 5G networks could potentially ground and delay planes. Verizon and AT&T are launching their 5G services nationwide, but are delaying today's rollout near some airports. Despite this, the issue has already impacted several flights across the country. Chris Van Cleve reports. Even one senior FAA official told me they expect there to be some, quote, bumps today and in the days ahead. And where I think you'll see this play out most clearly, the next time there's a big severe weather event like a big winter storm, airlines are going to be forced to cancel flights earlier and likely cancel flights for a longer period of time. But even something as benign as fog, particularly at a major airport, could cause delays lasting for hours to ripple across the country. And already some international airlines are canceling flights to the U.S. This morning, as AT&T and Verizon are launching their new ultra-fast 5G wireless service nationwide, airlines are bracing for travel headaches. We're going to see some disruptions. There's no question about it. Captain Joseph DePete is the president of the Airline Pilots Association. We want to be leaders in, in the world in terms of 5G, but we don't want to do it at the expense of aviation safety. While the FCC says 5G is safe, the FAA is concerned about interference with systems that help pilots land in low visibility and bad weather, prompting a host of flight restrictions. If there's cloud cover, if there's rain, you can't use that equipment. You can't land airports at Chicago O'Hare, at Atlanta, at Detroit. This cannot be the outcome. Airlines warned as many as 1,100 passenger and cargo flights a day would be delayed, diverted, or canceled. So Tuesday, the wireless companies agreed to two-mile buffer zones around many of the nation's busiest airports. The FAA says that will reduce the worst disruptions. But it has approved just 45 percent of airliners to operate in all weather conditions where 5G is active. Airline industry analyst Henry Hartevelt. This could have a disproportionate effect on people who live in mid-sized and smaller towns where they're dependent on smaller airplanes that are not on the approved list. Delta and other major airlines are preparing for weather-related cancellations due to the 5G restrictions. The nation's airports say tons of cargo shipments have already been impacted. It's a fasten your seatbelt, hang on kind of week. We got a sense for what a 5G delay may look like and how airlines will explain it. Let me show you this from United Airlines. They had a flight that was supposed to fly here from Denver to Houston. It was showing a three plus hour delay and the airline was very clear that they say it was because of the 5G activation. They even included a link where people could complain to the FCC. And while 5G has been activated in nearly 40 countries around the world without an issue, the FAA is still verifying about 55% of aircrafts that they have systems that that won't interfere with the 5G system. So these issues could go on for weeks. CBS News Money Watch reporter Irina Ivanova has also been looking, looking into this, and she joins us now to talk about it. So, uh, Irina, what can you tell us about this dilemma? Why is this becoming an issue now? Thanks, Wad. Uh, I do want to put this in context because a lot of consumers are probably confused. You know, we have been hearing for about 5G for some time and all uh, major carriers have advertised 5G service. So people are wondering, why is this an issue now? Uh, well, so this particular um, problem has to do with a particular frequency of signals. So cell phone signals can exist basically on a range of frequencies. And with them, you kind of have a trade-off between speed and coverage. So on one end of the spectrum, you can get very, very high speeds, but geographically, you don't have a lot of range. That signal isn't going to go very far. It might be you know, the distance of a city block. But on the other end of the spectrum, you could have lots of coverage, very broad coverage, but the speed of your 5G is not going to be very fast. It's basically not that much faster than 4G. So at issue is a particular range of frequencies that's sort of a sweet spot where you can have very high speeds, sometimes uh, 10 times as fast as 4G, and you also have very broad geographic coverage. Uh, last year, Verizon and AT&T spent nearly $70 billion between them to get access to this part of the spectrum. And so they're understandably very eager to roll out expanded 5G service to their customers and try to get more customers that way. Yeah, in a statement, uh, AT&T told CBS News, quote, we are frustrated by the FAA's inability to do what nearly 40 countries have done, which is to safely deploy 5G technology without disrupting aviation services. And we urge it to do so in a timely manner. And a spokesperson for the company goes on to say that the rest of their 5G launch will continue as planned. So uh, how 
has the role uh, out of five, the rollout, I should say, uh, of 5G gone in other countries? That's right. Um, you know, this is something that the CTIA, which is the uh, Wireless Industry Association, um, it points out many countries have done. You know, 40 countries have already put in 5G uh, in the same frequency range with no issues. Um, and it is a broad range of countries that have already done this. You know, most of Europe, uh, Asia, um, Australia, China, Japan, you know, parts of the Middle East, um, you know, have... Uh, 5G in this range of frequencies, and in fact, according to PC Mag, this particular range of frequencies is the most popular uh, frequency for 5G in the world. Um, I spoke with one uh, telecom analyst yesterday who said that, you know, in his perspective, U.S. airlines are considering uh, a simultaneous set of worst-case assumptions. So if everything goes absolutely wrong, you know bad things could happen. Of course, airlines will say they're doing this out of an abundance of caution. You know, even if there's a very small chance of things going wrong, the risks of airplanes falling out of the sky uh, are potentially catastrophic. Yeah, that's uh, for sure. Um, <laughs> so as AT&T and Verizon limit C-band 5G expansion around airports, um, I, I, you know, I, I Part of me is sort of like, look, I mean, yes, it's important to always be connected to your phone and to have that faster experience if you're on 5G, but I mean, you can still check your email, you can still check Instagram and, you know, Twitter and whatever else people are doing, you know, Wordle, um, on your phone if you're only using LTE or 4G or 3G even, right? I mean, so what kind of impact is this going to have on customers inside or around airports? Yeah, that's right. As you point out, you know, a ma major thing for customers uh, to remember is your 5G service is not going to get worse. You know, if you are on 5G now, whatever device uh, you have that uses 5G is going to keep doing that uh, with no no change, no impact. Um, what's going to happen is those people are not going to get access, uh, if they're AT&T and Verizon customers, um, they, they will not get access to higher speed and more capacity in and around airports, uh, at least for now. Uh, so one example um, from a telecom analyst is imagine uh, you're at the gate, you're about to board, uh, and you might want to download some movies to watch. And um, you could imagine, you know, several dozen people who are about to get on their flight are, are downloading things to watch while they're in the air. With this expanded 5G service, um, you could download three to four movies in about two to three minutes at uh, slower speeds, so 4G speeds, LTE speeds, uh, which we currently have uh, in a lot of airports, um, that will take, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. And so depending on when you start downloading, that's the difference between having a movie to watch when you board the flight and not having it. Um, you know, aside from the airports themselves, though, there's also parts of the country that are very densely populated, uh, where people do live close to airports. And so uh, these buffer zones that, um, the uh, telecoms have agreed to put around airports that will not get 5G in some parts of the country, they will hit, you know, people who are living close to the airports who are not necessarily flying. So uh, New York's LaGuardia Airport uh, is one of these cases. It's in Queens, which is very densely populated. Um, San Jose's airport and the Las Vegas airport will also leave out, you know, parts of the surrounding city. I mean, yeah, you make an excellent point about uh, people that live close to airports, uh, Arena. But yeah, I, I mean, it's sort of, when I was listening to you talking about people who want to download a movie or a couple of movies before they get on a plane, and I know it's a, it's a serious point, but all I could think of is what did we do before we were able to download three or four movies before getting on a flight, right? I mean, first of all, do it at home before you get to the airport if you really got to have those <laughs> films. And secondly, like back in the day, we used to just watch whatever the plane was showing with those big old stethoscope like you know earbuds that people used to wear on flights That's um, right. so I, I you know I sort of I, I get that you know this is part of the allure of owning a 5g device that you're able to do these you know things at, at, at a higher speed and with more capacity um, but you know they, they sort of do seem at this point even if you if you have a 5g phone it does sort of feel like a first world problem um, do these concerns uh, relate to flight attendants for example um, you know, asking their, their uh, passengers to turn off their phones or to put them in airplane mode if you do that. Is there any risk there? Um, you know, that's that's kind of part of the same issue. Um, you know, for a prolonged time, we have been told to turn off our devices uh, because there is a concern that the signals sent between your device and, you know, cell phone towers on the ground 
uh, could be disruptive. Um, now, I, I think you and I uh, both know that people don't always do that. There are lots of times when, you know, somebody just forgets to turn off their device or to put it in, in uh, in airplane mode, you know, I've, I've forgotten to do it myself on a few occasions. Um, and despite this, you know, we have not had any example of this actually uh, causing uh, problems, um, you know, or, or damaging flights. Uh, but it is a potential distraction, you know, uh, pilots can be potentially distracted by these signals. Um, so it, it is, uh, you know, part of the same issue. And again, as with um, the airline industry's um, concerns about 5G, you know, they will say, in this case also, it's best to avoid any potential distractions, no matter how minor you and I might think they can be. For more on Arena's reporting on AT&T and Verizon's 5G rollout, you can read her article on our website, cbsnews.com.